Yo, this is Daniel Montero back here with Ganjay Sessions. Ganjay Smoke Break, excuse me, it's been a long evening. I'm here with Big Nick Bryan, originally from Indiana, hailing out of Santa Cruz now, holding it down with Golden State Banana. You and I have some history, bro, and I'm so happy that I ran into you. We got about 10, 12 minutes, so I just want to jump in so the audience can know more about you and your story, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. Can you tell us um, quickly how you grew up, you know, where you grew up, and how your first experience with cannabis was? Yeah. Uh, first off, let me say uh, thanks for having me on, man. I appreciate you. We definitely have some great history. We got a lot of good shit going on, so I'm proud to be here with you at this fucking great event, you know, and sharing it, being with people that are all from the area. From the industry, this legacy group we like to call it, and fucking people that we've been breaking bread with a long time. And, um, you know, I don't know. We, I know we don't got a lot of, a lot of time. I want to reminisce with you a little bit, but yeah. but yeah. So uh, originally from Indianapolis, Indiana, uh, I grew up. I grew up there. I started growing cannabis there in about 1996, and um, you know, so that was 20. Two years ago, maybe 1997. What kind of neighborhood were you in? Uh, I was in a urban area, urban areas. We were growing in basements, growing in garages, uh, and a lot of it back then was uh, heavy vegetative, getting ready for the uh, for the outdoor, growing in the corn. Right, it was really gorilla, throw a lot of veg plants, just put them all out in corn. We weren't really flowering indoor back then. We would just grow thousands of clones and, and keep that it, clones going throughout those couple months from May to June, July, and just put as many clones out as we could in the cornfields and in fields and where we could. And, and that was the, you know, that was the crop. Uh, and then it started evolving into indoor, right? We started doing small indoors this, you know, four lights this, six lights that. And, um, uh, you know, that, that was the beginning of, uh, you know, I guess uh, me, me with cannabis. I first smoked when I was 12 years old. I told the story on a podcast uh, with Adam Hill a couple weeks ago. Uh, my good friend, one of my best friends that I've grown up with and, uh, and uh, done a lot of business with in life, but uh, his sister was one of my friends that I went to school with growing up, so he had a little hut in the back of their house and we broke in there and stole a couple joints from him. And, uh, and we went and, and uh, smoked, smoked at this abandoned fucking paint factory. And that was my first experience with cannabis. You know, it was just a good time hanging with friends, and and uh, I think the vibe from that, you know, was uh, you know something that made me want to, you know, just just keep that alive. You know. What I want to know, Nick, is who is your mentor? Who taught you the ropes in the game? Uh, I mean, there's a lot of mentors I have over the years, uh, but I think, uh, I mean, that's a difficult question. Like I said, a lot of mentors, a lot of people I look up to. Your pops. Uh, yeah, definitely my father. I, I you know, I uh, I eat lunch with my dad still a lot, you know, frequently, and just asking him questions and talking about politics from the '70s when they were trying to legalize things, and uh, you know, the evolution of where we got into now. So that's definitely, yeah, definitely a big mentor. But you know, a lot of these cats in the cannabis industry well, coming up and and just seeing everybody being brave. You dropped your smile. <laughs> right on, bro. Got him. Got him. We're just on camera real quick, my man. Appreciate you. Yeah. <laughs> Nick. You know how it is. And, you know, I remember you talking about your pop when we were talking, when we would have our conversations, yeah. you know, hooking up yeah. over the hill. History. And what I'm saying is, uh, what, what, is one of, what are one of the lessons, one of the main lessons that he uh, taught you that you still hold dear to you today? That helps you do business. Uh, I mean, I think especially in business, uh, one of the one of the key things he always says, man, and I say this to a lot of my friends, especially as we've been evolving in this industry right now, pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered. You know, don't need to worry about being the biggest or, or being, you know, worrying about anybody else. You're still going big, right man. I mean, you know, I'm doing me. I have high ambitions. I definitely, you know, I got some goals, but, uh, you know, just... You know, I remember I just, saying that back in the day. Yeah, you know, everybody eats is my mentality, you know, so I like to break bread with everybody. I like to make money with everybody, and, you know, and, and that's kind of been my, my recipe for success. What was one of the craziest things you had to do to stay out of trouble back in the day day? Oh, man. If you feel comfortable. No, I mean, I, I, yeah, that, I've done it all, I feel like, you know. I've... Uh, you know, up into this evolution to where we're at now, which we're still not all the way there. We still can't get a bank account. We still have to figure out how to 
make this you know money work and and, and you know and and, uh, and uh, our biggest our best attempt to pay taxes to the state and and be a real business and be recognized as that but i mean what I've, what i've done i've man i've my bad do you feel comfortable talking about what happened what we just said what happened at one of your properties um i mean yeah i mean you know that's reality we're still dealing with it right now you know you got raided right yeah raided yeah. right now dealing with like i said just kind of that old guard right of some old local cops who right now they're getting a little bit of local money it goes into a general fund right these cops have always been able to just dip their hands right in and do whatever they want you know and there's still a couple there who are just trying to run you know do you know treat this as like the old that old school way you know and can you share with the audience a situation i'm sorry just because of time yeah sure um a situation that you had to bounce back from uh, a situation uh, I've had got enough. jammed up. Oh, you know I saying? mean, you know, 2004, we were raided. I lost everything, you know. I didn't have, uh, you know, I had to go through that same old thing everybody goes through. They took everything from me. They took all my money, all my bank accounts, seized everything, all the cannabis, you know, nothing. I have a family, kids, you know, I had to start over, you know. Went and got a job, started a career, you know, and I feel like, you know, I tell a lot of people that story, that, that opened the door to me being able to step out once I was successful in that career and say I am a taxpayer and this is something I believe in and I do want to push this forward and, and you know I felt like that was you know we just had that conversation about a couple of years ago when I was just out in the open I'm stepping out I'm doing this I'm, I'm gonna you know I'm gonna make it happen for the community and I'm gonna push this forward and you know that's I think I think that you know I, like I tell that you know some some of the worst things that happen you know bring you to the best time you know open the, the best doors for you you know you just well, I agree you know I've been through some tragedy we've all been through it and what I want to say is Nick is a true hustler man you know what I'm saying ever since the first day I've known him he's made, made a reputation for himself for being that and I commend you for that 100% man you give us um, all us hustlers motivation and you inspire us to be where you're at having a, a worldwide recognized cannabis brand is so Thank dope you, so you, real quick the few couple minutes that we have left a couple questions in a nutshell, how would you describe your relationship with cannabis? Oh, uh, it's a lifelong relationship. Uh, you know, I love cannabis. It's been something that has uh, formed relationships and bonds with people, and and you know, created. Uh, I feel like uh, broke down barriers with family through religion, with, with just just this evolution of this plant and where we what we've done what we've done with it it's a uh, it's my life you know? it's, it's everything for me. I live it I dream it I sleep it I you know there isn't anything else for me so that's my relationship we got two minutes in a nutshell we're doing we're doing great bro um, how would you uh, describe cannabis culture what does cannabis culture mean to you oh man you know <clears throat> I think it, it's I love cannabis culture and, and these questions we talk about, how do you describe cannabis culture to people like us who live cannabis culture? What does it mean to you in a nutshell? But I think that's what it is. I think it's our life. It's, it, it, you know, uh, what we represent is cannabis, you know, just, just the original legacy of what we've all been through to get here, the struggles and, and, and just for the love, you know, for the love of this plant that we all, you know, persevered, we've all been through everything, and, and now here we are, you know, again, I, you know, we're still going through it, we're still not there, but every day it gets better, every day we're getting closer and we're evolving to, you know, something I think we're, we're all proud of, you know. And Nick, in a couple sentences, where do you envision yourself three to five years from now, and your brand? Oh, you know, I all, my ambitions are big, you know, one of the biggest cannabis brands in the world. I want to be everywhere. I want to provide this, you know, my can, my brand, and, and the cannabis that I can cultivate to everywhere, every corner of the earth. So hopefully, three to five years, we're there. And Nick, how can the audience get a hold of you, man? What's the IG for Golden State? Uh, Golden State Banana is the IG. It's Golden Golden underscore State underscore Banana. Uh, GoldenStateBanana.com and. Uh, all the dispensaries, uh, any, all your favorite dispensaries. Yeah, if you guys want to follow a model, you know what I'm saying, somebody's footsteps, follow this guy, you know what I'm saying? From ground zero, as you heard, 2004, 15 years later, on top of the world, man, still grinding, still, still trying to figure out, 
figure it out. We're in the same position, man. And I just want to say, just because we're on that time constraint, I really appreciate you coming on the show, bro. I got a lot of love bro. for you, respect for you, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So much. Give me a squeeze, bro. Yeah.